this is something that's been talked about a lot. What is the new normal? What is the new reality? And the truth is, we actually don't really know. It's all happened too quickly. I'm a freelance um, creative director. I service the agency market. I work on pitches all the time. And until recently, everybody said, I want something disruptive. I want something really cool. And we've had a little bit more disruption than we'd like. So when we're going to breathe through, we're always somewhere between the known and the unknown. And so what we do from a design thinking point of view is you're going to create the new normal. And so you need to have some design leadership and you need to have some rigor and some virtue and figure out how it's going to work for you. So the first thing I'd say to everyone is be brave. You're going to have to be brave and you're going to have to get on with it because in truth, everybody is a critic now. So there was the, the great um, novelist and essay writer, Albert Camus. He famously wrote an essay, which was actually a, a lecture, which was create dangerously. And he said to create today is to create dangerously because they, the act exposes one to the passion of an age that forgives nothing. And all he's saying is everyone is a critic. So still just be brave and get on with it because if you want a new normal, we're gonna have to create it. We are the experts. Create bravely. Brave is about being bold. And I think that you guys know far more than you think that you know. So at the moment, we need heroes. We need a whole industry of heroes. We need to accept that a lot of them, up until now, a lot of them have reached their sell-by dates. So it's time to stock up on new ideas and apply these new ideas with rigor and virtue. In truth, the future will look a bit like the events industry that we live in now. It will feel familiar. The infrastructure is going to be very similar. The venues, they're still going to be there. The higher stuff that we make events out of, that's still going to be there. So it will look familiar. But what we have to accept is that the audience will be different. The people will be different. The people of 2020 exist in a new culture. And they have reassessed how they feel about the world, they've reassessed how they value things. And that's what we have to change in the way that we approach our event design. Now, obviously, you already know this. Going live also means going live online. And you haven't got a choice with that because every event that we do now is going to be a twin event where there will be a live component and there will be a live online component. So after this extreme pause that we've been, we've been put through, the future is going to be hit incredibly hard and it's going to arrive incredibly hard. And that means that every event that we do will have to exist in two planes and the two planes have to be designed differently. So if you're designing for live or you're designing for live online, the content, that may well be the same, but the way that you deliver that content and the infrastructure that you use to deliver that content is going to be completely different. That's why when we create bravely, pick the right strategic infrastructure now, pick the right way of delivering your event online, and you'll be able to go forward and make bigger and stronger future events. Now, we have no alternative. This is exactly how it's going to be. Because at the end of the day, events are still about people. And despite the technology or despite the changes or the different infrastructure, be it live or live online, events are still a sensory experience. And to our audiences, Feelings are facts. That's the way it goes for them. So you have to remember your audience at all time. They're human beings, which means that they receive roughly 75% of all of the information through your eyes. It's a big one, it's messy, it's dirty, it's polluted, 
but it's the biggest communication sense that we have, your eyes, 75%, whether live or live online, you have the visual. After that, the event is a touchy, feely, tasty, smelly, noisy sort of thing. About 13% of the information that we receive passes through your ears, but your ears are incredibly important because that's where the information comes from first. So if we have something that, that sounds great or doesn't sound so great, we move closer to it or we move further away. You then have taste and smell and touch. Now, all of those are less important in the live online, but in the live um, arena, it's something that we can use to massively personalize what we do. Smells are amazing. We can hold 10,000 olfactory um, memories in our brain at any given time, which means if you use a scent or a smell, and you can use that to communicate with your audience and you can take them back any time that you like. So it's, it's a wonderful way of really personalizing things. So that's what we'd be looking for. So in these extreme times with extreme ideas and this hybrid or twinned thing that we have, you're always going to have your conference or your event or your product launch, which is going to have a given number of prerequisites that come with the particular brief for that particular event. Beyond that, I want to give you some rules that you can use that, that take you a little bit further. Three simple tests that will ensure what you do in the future, what you change, is fit for purpose. And that's where extreme event design comes in. Now, extremism has poor connotations and uh, it's been hijacked, but don't be afraid of it. Extremism is actually pretty good because extremism is about taking things as far as they can possibly go. And you've got an audience who expects something new every time and they deserve something new every time. You've got the ability, because you're in live events, to go further than anyone's ever gone before. So all we're really looking for is taking things as far as they can possibly go this time, but in the future, you get to do it again. And that way you're always reinventing your, your, your events, you're always reinventing your experiences. So what I'd like to introduce to you is extreme accessibility, extreme sustainability, and extreme likability. Because the, the strategies for taking things beyond just the conventional brief, you know, you will have to fulfill a plenary or you will have to fulfill a meeting for scientists or pharma or a mobile phone launch. And those, that particular element of the brief will have its own constituent parts. But beyond that, I want you to ask going forward in the future with the new normal is, can I make this event more accessible, more inclusive than it ever was before? Because if you do that, you'll have a better audience and a bigger audience. If you can do it sustainably and responsibly, then you'll have a business which will carry on working. And if you have extreme likability, your audience will join in with you. If they join in with you, they will build your event for you. So let me break those three rules down. Extreme accessibility. Now it equals bigger audiences because um, it works on so many levels. Whether it's live or live online, if you make joining your meeting or joining your party or joining your event, if you make it as burdenless and as easy as possible, then you're going to have a bigger audience and they're going to join and they're going to stay for longer. If you make your event more inclusive, then again, you have an opportunity for a bigger audience. 15% of the EU and about 22% of the UK population carry some form of disability. So if you can make your event more inclusive, then you have the opportunity to grow your audience. And guaranteeing um, accessibility also means, like you have today, a digital iteration of your event live online. It's going to mean more work. 
be clear about that because you, you will have a, effectively a, a live show and a live TV show. It will make, mean more work, but it is a bigger audience. Any of you who just saw Collier's um, pitch, uh, he went through his deck and he called it eye level. Some people call it, in other agencies, call it a dial. It's a 180 dial where you, you plan your event and you plan your event content, because it's the same content, whether it be for live or live online, just the delivery is different. And you plan that content and you dial up the live or you dial up the live online in the same way as IMAX has for this, where they have dialed completely from live to completely live online. And if you do that, your audience will be bigger, happier and better. Extreme sustainability, it speaks for itself in that um, we will have a sustainable business if we do things better, which means that we have to consume less, genuinely about four times less. Um, so we really are looking for more content and less production. If you're going to do things sustainably, which means the most reliable, virtuous choices you can make, then you tell your audience about it, tell them why you're doing it, they will respect you for it. And if you're being honest, you're going to need them to join in with you. It's the only way it will happen. So more content, less production, look at every touch point, every sign, every gift, every delegate pack. You know, what are they made out of? How did they get here? What's the value? What's the commercial cost? What's the carbon cost? And by being transparent, let every delegate that goes to your event, let them have a, an event infographic or some kind of index as they leave, which explains how much energy was consumed, um, where the food and the beverages came from, how little waste there was, if there's any carbon offset to do. We simply have to make that a standard for our industry if we wish our industry to move forward. And that's what we need in the new normal. The third thing is likability. Extreme likability is longevity because your meetings, your parties, your events, they're all powered by your audiences. And if they trust you, if they trust your event beyond your content, if they stand by you through the good and through the bad, through these extreme times, and you can maintain your connection, you have a, a, you know, your event professionals, you have an amazing amount of knowledge of your individual audiences, and there's no reason why you can't um, commune and make things better for them than they've ever been before. Uh, use, you know, unleash your talent and use everything that you need to do to make it better for them, because extreme likability is the new value metric. As we said at the beginning of the um, session, it's not the infrastructure that's changed, the venues and the higher audio visual and the screens and the technology that will still be there but it will be used differently because your audience will have changed and this extreme likability is the new value metric that you need because it documents what your audiences feel about your event and as far as your event is concerned their feelings are facts then there's something that's always been here you have to add one new thing every time because basically it's the only thing they're going to remember. Every event that you ever have designed or ever will design has been before. So you must add one new thing and you're extremists now. And so you're taking it as far as it will go this time and adding something new so that people remember that particular event or that particular experience. It was the year that IMEX went totally online. It was the year that IMEX did the first IMEX run. Always add one new thing. This comes from uh, Daryl Nielsen, Palace Resorts. Now, Robert won't have heard of this, so this is fresh to him. These haven't been set up, it's just come through. What do you think of on-site hybrid style events in the immediate time frame? An example. 50% of attendees are in the general session and 50% watch in the guest room and or available restaurant or other available space. Um, I think you mentioned uh, Collier's session before yours. I know m most people probably on the call didn't see that, but he was talking about this, this idea that um, 
the, the, the live event will still sponsor in the future. This is, this is not me. This probably isn't even medium term, but let's say when we have a vaccine and when things go back to relatively normal, um, that things will change fundamentally. Um, but even when they do change, it, it will be that the live event is the, 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 the kernel. Everything's built still around the live event, but people don't have to come to the same space. Um, whether they'll come to the region and be in the same city or, or town or convention center even, but perhaps in different rooms. Um, have you had have got any views on that? I, I'm asking you to sort of, you know, read some tea leaves and look in the future. But have you got any gut feeling about the um, that that kind of where, where we might end up in, in the whole of in this whole balancing act between hybrid and live? Everything is going to be hybrid and live now. Um, there, there is there is no alternative. What Collier said was he described something he called it eye level. And he had a little thing like he had a, um, a small red dot. And what he said was when these, you start planning your event, uh, every, every, every event already uses technology and it already is a human experience. You know, the feelings are facts thing. Um, all that's changing is the, the relationship between the two of those is changing. So what Collier was saying is you decide what your event is going to be. So you're launching a phone and it's going to be this. And, and in, in the past, there might have been a thousand people in the room and 1.4 million people streaming online, um, watching it. You, you effectively, you prepare two events. The content is the same. It's the phone, it's the launch, it's whatever it be. But the experience of the people who are there live of the thousand people, they get to touch and feel and smell and, and lick the phone. Some of them, it's ridiculous. Whereas the people online have to have a different experience. So they have to, they need more, um, more content graphics. They need motion graphics. They need things to explain what's going on. And then you want to connect the two of those together. So what Collier said, uh, of Dams was when you're planning, you plan whether or not it's a little bit live or mainly live, or totally live online, and you move the dial along. So this is, you know, other agencies call this a twinned event. And what it means is that you've got a, a, a live version and a live online version, and you move that dial dependent on the conditions at the moment. So at the moment, you know, the IMAX, Planet IMAX has, has gone all the way along from live to live online. And um, in truth, in the future, and, and it will be a live and a live online um, event. And that's how it's always going to be because it can give you a bigger audience, because it can cut down your carbon footprint, because it is more inclusive and because people like to choose the way that they engage with your event. And so all you're really doing is you're empowering your audience. And if you empower your audience, they like it more, they trust you more. So I think the hybrid um, twinned dual event is the way that everything is going to be now, because that's exactly what our audience is like. You know, they, they experience something live and they say something different online. We're all schizophrenic now. So make your events the same. What you're saying, though, is that um, the days of saying we've got a live, our, our event is live, and by that, organisers mean they've just got a camera pointed at the stage and it's live streaming. The days of that are gone. That is not really, really live. It's, it's literally live, but it's not enough to really feed online participants what they need, because going back to your first few slides, they're not there to see, to feel, to get the emotional connection that those who are live get. And you have to replace those experiences. So again, going to the, using the, the phone launch example that we gave earlier on, it's much easier if you follow one track. So you've got a thousand people in the room or 1.4 million people streaming. And if you were to do this tomorrow, there would be no one in the room and there would be literally 2.4, 2.5 million people streaming. When it, goes, when it goes back to being a hybrid event where there will be maybe 200 people in the room who will be invited guests and you will gamify that and you will allow them to get to that live event and they get something special out of that. The people who are online have to get a different experience and so you'll also want to be able to post merchandise to them, send things to them. There's an awards that's happening in July 
and they're sending out a box um, to every single person who would have gone to the awards. And you open the box at a given time and there are various things in there. So you can still introduce the experience of touch and taste and you can still have shared experiences even though you're remote to one another. It's just a question of curating that experience, whether it be at long range or at short. I think um, I, I, most people won't know who I am. I'm, I'm, I work with in the world of behavioural science and face-to-face -face human interaction. So I, I, uh, my team of behavioural psychologists and I help people connect, interact and communicate more effectively face-to-face, -face, specifically face-to-face. -face. And I think it's interesting to disting, distinguish experience versus connection because there's no doubt um, you know you can bring a, an experience in before the event and after the live event through people who are not going to be there sending stuff out beforehand as you just said um, or following up afterwards or you you can be creative but i would still argue from a psychological perspective uh, for the meetings and events industry that it's very difficult to replace the emotional connection that one gets human to human so you might be able to get people to enjoy the experience but and you'd need to do some you know scientists need to do some research but but will people feel connected to each other as much and i guess that comes down to what is the goal of the event if the event is to connect people i think you know you see it a lot used by the industry at the moment you can't be face to face there's multitude of studies you know we've you know we've done stuff even at imex in frankfurt where we did some research face to face if you're trying to build connections is always better so it's interesting how the industry is going to um going to you know decide decide how to use the, the uh, virtual element and, and make a live event into a hybrid one. Um, well, as an adjunct to that, I, I totally agree. The, the, the people being denied the face-to-face -face experience and the individual contact that we would normally have a, a, term, a live event is actually going to make it more precious. It's not going to become less important. It's going to become more important. But it's going to be different. It will not be the normal way that you had it before where you just throw people into a large space and let them get on with it. It's going to have to be far more curated because it's going to be more of a precious luxury. So the actual live experience is going to be more important than it ever was before. It's going to have a higher value than it ever had before, but it may not be a mass participation. It may be a smaller, more, uh, more luxury led um, affair, which means that you need to have different experiences and you can, you're not, not going to get, you know, we discussed this at the beginning when we said, you know, look at the touchy, feely, smelly, tasty event. Um, if you're online, you've got your ears and you've got your eyes and those are the only two senses that you've got. So it cannot be the same, but there can be an emotional connection to refer to your earlier point. We have emotional connections to TV shows, to, to music, to experiences. You could show a photograph of um, somewhere you've been on holiday and you still have that emotional connection to it. So it's understanding your audience and making sure that that connection is relevant to them because if it is relevant to them, then they will feel good about it and feelings as we know are facts.